Hey there and welcome to your school news. I'm Brandon Shope. Thanks so much for joining us. There's a lot of great things happening here in the school system along with watching this show. We hope you like us on Facebook and also follow us there on Twitter as well. Now for a quick look at our top headlines. Free fruits and vegetable program brings healthy snacks to students. Forest Hills Elementary School holds a food drive to celebrate World Food Day. And NHCS Career Technical Education Department launches a new online program called Zello. Our top story this week, several NHCS schools were recently selected to participate in the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program for the 2020-2021 school year. The Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program is a federally assisted program and it provides fresh fruits and veggies to children at eligible elementary schools during the school day. Now the child nutrition managers will coordinate a time to allow these healthy snacks to be passed out during the day to in-person students. Additionally, the staff will offer this program at curbside and when students are participating in remote learning days. The following elementary schools were selected for this program. Bradley Creek Elementary, Alderman, Forest Hills, Gregory, Blair, Williams, Murrayville, Pine Valley, Freeman, Snipes, Sunset Park, Winter Park, and Wrightsboro. To help give a clearer picture of this program, we recently caught up with NHCS's Director of Child Nutrition, Imer Smith, and asked her about the program's value. And so it's um, a great opportunity for kids to taste different fruits and vegetables that they might not have tasted at home. Um, it also provides great nutrients, you know, for the students to have. And, um, you know, rather than um, eating chips and drinking sodas, we're able to provide them with nice, healthy, fresh fruits and vegetables during the day. And in addition to introducing children to new kinds of fresh fruits and vegetables, the program also encourages healthier school environments by promoting nutrition education. Finally, Ms. Smith noted that the number of elementary schools taking part in this program changes from year to year. So if your school is not one of the schools listed, you never know, you might see it on there next year. In New Edinburgh County, one out of every five people live with food insecurity. This translates to more than 12,000 children under the age of 18 who don't have access to nutritious foods to keep them healthy. To address this need, Forest Hills Global Elementary recently recognized and honored World Food Day. They do it every single year by participating in an annual food drive. The school wants to do their part to help fight hunger in the Cape Fear region. And this year, the school food drive took place from October 19th through the 23rd. Students brought in food donations to the classrooms and a community drive was held in the Forest Hills parking lot. A lot of generous folks from around the Wilmington area came out to lend a helping hand and make a donation. Forest Hills Global will be taking the donated food to the local food bank Mother Hubbard's Cupboard. Some of the items donated included boxes of cereal, you've got the mac and cheese, cans of vegetables, and some canned fruit as well. Our passion is children and their welfare. And so this is something that's really important to us. We, we have to meet those basic needs before we can teach them anything. They need to have food in their bellies. So this is, is, a, is something very close to our heart to make sure that children have food so that they can come here and, and learn and do their best. More than 250 food items were donated during the community drive. The food drive over there at Forest Hills Global was a great support for those who need it here in our community. It also helped teach students the value of giving and caring for others. A big congratulations to Ms. Lindsay Williams and Ms. Shayla Harper for creating artwork selected to be featured in the In Racism Now exhibition in downtown Wilmington. With this recognition, those teachers are actively working to provide students with a safe and productive way to celebrate diversity. Lindsay Williams is a teacher at Rachel Freeman School of Engineering working in special education. Her piece was inspired by a painted portrait of Ms. Rachel Freeman. It's hanging in the school's front office. To honor her work and to get students involved, our teacher Marsha Revels will recreate the exhibit with students and staff inside the school. Shayla Harper is an ELAEC teacher at Trask Middle School. She chose to provide images of the many components of her culture using a quilt design. Historically, an African quilt is a traditional handmade piece passed down from generation to generation. It symbolically tells a story. The art installation in the form of large three-dimensional letters will be on display at the Gervais Park Memorial Park rather, for one year. The artwork will also be featured online and in a documentary as well. The New Hanover County School CTE Department is launching a new online college and career readiness program called Zello for students and staff. The software is aimed at helping students bridge the gap between education and the real world. 
In addition, it allows students to pursue interests aligned to pathways offered in the district. Zello will be used by NHCS's middle and high school teachers, career development coordinators, special population coordinators, and counselors. New features that Zello will offer include interactive and engaging lessons to help students with 21st century skills. Reporting and student feedback functionality that enables CTA staff and counselors to better understand and respond to the academic career needs of each student. Connection to PowerSchool and NC Ed accounts. So it lives in each student's account, making the simple sign-on process easy to find and use. College planning. Many, many tools assist with and track post-secondary outcomes. NHCS and CT's goal with this new software is to prepare students to be future ready. The program will introduce a comprehensive college and career readiness platform that is tracking and reporting capabilities as well as great appropriate content building year after year. In addition, Zello will help ensure middle school students have the foundational skills and knowledge needed to make informed decisions as they transition to high school. For additional information, on Zello, please contact the director of CTE. It's Shamika D. Shuford at cte.central at nhcs.net. Wednesday, October 21st was National Unity Day. National Unity Day was started in 2011 and is a day that is dedicated to putting an end to bullying. People are encouraged to wear the color orange in solidarity with the movement, and students and staff from across the county did just that. People took to social media using the hashtag Unity Day and posted photos of themselves smiling and wearing the color orange. We want to give a big shout out to all of the wonderful staff and students that strive every day to be courageous and helpful to everyone. Medford County Schools is dedicated to see an end to bullying and fostering positive learning environments for all students. This is your school news on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online right now at www.nhcs.net. Because of you, I felt hopeless. Because you said rude things about my work, I started to question my own voice. I know it was a joke, but it still hurt me. Because of your negative comments online, I've almost quit doing the one thing that makes me happiest in life. Because you shared something about me that was private, I felt embarrassed. Because you said hi to me on the first day of school, I felt included and I knew that I was gonna be okay. Because of you sharing your story with me, I feel comfortable sharing my own. Because you were there when I was coming out, you helped me regain my confidence. I'm still here today because of you. Hey there, welcome back to Your School News. I'm Brandon Shope. It's time for our Education Index, a look around the nation and the world at some of the top stories in education. Topping the index, kids in France will now be attending school again, but it won't be the same. The French president has made it very clear to the students, use social distancing and wear your mask. He also made it possible for schools to close. Now, if that happens, then parents will get work leave if they so choose. The government has been trying to make the rules stricter because of the rising cases from the summertime holidays. All 12 million students are affected by this, and these kids will have a very hard time adjusting to new school life in the classroom with the COVID out and about. 
The government and the president are very concerned with the safety of these students and will do everything in their power to protect them from getting the virus. The president doesn't want the students to be afraid of going back to school, which is why he's taking all necessary precautions with this virus to make sure that none of the students catch the deadly COVID-19. Parents in Scotland forced the Scottish government to open up schools. Many parents felt like their kids were not getting enough education from being remote. We're very afraid for our children, says Joe Bissett. The parents have had a very powerful voice during this educational debate on whether or not they are going back. That made the government reconsider its post-lockdown plans. There was also a group on Facebook with over 8,000 parents trying to influence the government. Most parents feel this way because they have to work full-time jobs and they have to leave the kids at home. Some politicians are also backing the cause for these kids going to school. The most important politician backing them up is the first Minister of Scotland, Lord McConnell of Glen's Corridale. On education, they've taken their eye off the ball, the ball McConnell says. Uh, and last week, the government issued a two-week lobbying campaign on how the government would try to set up the full week schedule. The teachers, students, and especially the parents are happy to see a return to school. Finally, historical black colleges and universities will receive millions from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. On October 13th, the foundation announced it would be giving $15 million over a three-year period to up to 10 schools to serve as COVID-19 testing hubs, providing testing for their students and staff. Now, the grant supplements the work that is already being done through the JUST project. The foundation confirmed that the schools have begun receiving their allocated grants. While it wasn't immediately clear how many tests this will allow each college to process on a weekly basis, a spokesperson from the Gates Foundation said the grants were designed to enable them to test all of their students, faculty, and staff as often as their own protocols require. They're, they are starting with six colleges and universities that all specialize in public health, like Howard University College of Medicine. It's a crucial investment for colleges that are serving communities disproportionately harmed by the pandemic, said Howard University President Dr. Wayne Frederick. The funding does not just benefit their own campuses. The selected schools will also be partnering with other historical black colleges and universities across the country. With us being a total family of about 104 HBCUs, I think we do have the capacity to cover just about everyone, Frederick said. And that's this week's Education Index, a quick look at some of the interesting education stories from around the nation and the world. Now don't go away, we'll be right back. Your school news continues both on cable and online. Make sure to look for our blue logo for all the latest news online right now at nhcs.net. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Wow. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. No. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call it. a cab, a car, it. or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Welcome back to your school news. I'm Brandon Chope. There's a lot going on on Twitter these days, and with our NHCS chat hashtag, you can join the conversation. Right now, it's time for our What's Tweeting segment, all the latest NHCS news and photos that are creating a buzz right now on Twitter. 
Our first story comes from Myrtle Grove Middle, where students continue to enjoy both clubs and you know, activities during this time of COVID. Since August, students at Myrtle Grove have had the opportunity to participate in interest-based clubs. These clubs have helped the students stay connected with each other while they were remote. Among other clubs, the Project Blackboard Club has created chalk works of art on the school's pavement, and the Fishing Club has helped to clean a local beach. Awesome job, Myrtle Grove. Next, we feature two hardworking NHCS departments that help get kids back into the classroom. The NHCS Purchasing and Transportation Departments have been hard at work during the last couple of weeks with distributing masks to the county's pre-K and elementary schools. NHCS ordered 30,000 child-sized masks earlier this year, and these two departments have been doing an excellent job to help ensure the safety of NHCS students. Thanks for all the hard work. Now we head over there to Southeast Area Technical High School, also known as C-Tech, where two students and a teacher have been recognized for their qualities. 11th grader Omar Reyes and 9th grader Kaylin Eisenhart have been de designated as C-Tech's Students of the Month for October. They were recognized for demonstrating persistence and problem-solving skills in their classes. In addition to the two students, English teacher Mrs. Tompkins, who just so happened to be my 12th grade teacher, was awarded with the school's Teacher of the Month Award for displaying the same qualities. Congratulations to all of those recognized. Really proud of you. Over at Murray Middle, students are studying a famous novel and are showing what they want to be remembered for in an interesting project. Classes of each C teachers, Ms. Hauser and Ms. Rossler, are reading the hit book Wonder by R.J. Palacio, which was also recently made into a movie. After the students read the book, they each created a product that represented what they wanted to be known for. A Minecraft pyramid about caring for animals a Lego monument about sharing with others, and a colorful poster about caring for the planet were among the monuments created. Great work, students. Next up, we feature Holly Tree Elementary's outstanding commitment to keeping their students learning despite learning barriers. At the school, half of the students are in person and half are learning remotely. But the teachers have been hard at work to keep the learning fun and make everyone feel included. Students this week have been learning about number lines and hatching chickens, among other things. They stay in the game, Holly Shelter. Our final story today comes from Trask Middle, where the school is giving parents a valuable resource to help their kids outside of the classroom. The resource, a website from the Student Success Organization Second Step, gives parents timely advice on how to ask about their kids' mental health, regulate screen time, and give a healthy amount of independence. The resources also include videos of parents and students sharing their struggles and how they moved, uh, overcame those challenges. Keep up the good work, Trask. This is your school news on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at nhcs.net. Also make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And for the latest weather conditions, keep it right here for your exclusive Weather Plus forecast. It's on the screen when you need it. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. I'm from Blue Hood Stone Barns. We brought a meal for you and I'm here to serve it to you. Okay, great. Come in. Zucchini carbonara, made from zucchini that was harvested earlier this morning. Again? Oh. <laughs> hey, Dan Barber. You have room for a little bit more? <laughs> come, yeah, on come on in. Come on in. with sausage. So when we made that zucchini carbonara, you know, they're the end pieces of the zucchini and then the cores that we cut away, not to mention zucchini flour. Usually those get thrown out. We use them to create an entire second dish. Does that, oh. Again? Uh. I'm here to bring you your third course. It's the vines from your zucchini. We'll have a little zucchini stem pasta. A different experience of zucchini. When we start to think differently about our food, we can get a lot more out of it. This is delicious. What do you think we can make out of this? 40% of food in America is never eaten. Cook it, store it, share it. Visit savethefood.com.
Welcome back to your school news. I'm Brandon Shope. Keith Moore, the athletic director at New Hanover High School, recently received the Charlie Adams Distinguished Service Award from the North Carolina Athletic Association. We sat down with him recently to learn more about him and this prestigious award, a special feature. The, uh, the Charlie Adams Distinguished Service Award is uh, given annually each year in, um, in memory and in honor of Charlie Adams, who was the executive director from 1984 to 2010 with the High School Athletic Association. It's, um, you know, given for work with uh, student athletes and coaches with the High School Athletic Association and everything with uh, athletics. It all started, uh, I started in my career coaching and uh, teaching in um, 1988 here in New Hanover County. A uh, graduate of New Hanover High School. I was honored and humbled to be chosen, but I think uh, just on the daily teachings and lessons with the kids and coaches and just people in general, if you always do your best um, and, and try, uh, hard and have good work ethic and at the end of the day you can say well okay I, I did everything I could today um, and just kind of have that uh, frame of mind that every day's got to be you know how can I move forward today and touch somebody's life uh, so that um, not only in the moment but so that it's something that Later on, they'll say, oh, I remember when this happened, or I remember when this occurred, or I remember Coach Moore saying this, or doing this, or blah, blah, blah. So it's just on a daily basis trying to be a role model for um, not only the student athletes, but my own coaches. I try to live by what I tell them. I try to follow that and, and set the example. I, I think if you ask anybody that deals with me on a daily basis, I try to help others all that I can. If I see there's a need, I don't go out searching for it. If I see it, then I jump in and help or I try to, um, you know, assist somebody in, in something. But um, because, you know, at, at the, the end of the day, we're all in it together and we're all trying to pull in the same direction. Now the school system is in the AABB Plan B, teachers and students have had to adapt to a combination of in-person and remote learning. Our next feature comes from Parsley Elementary School in their kindergarten classes. They will show us how they have adapted to succeed under Plan B. It's definitely been an adjustment, you know, just taking everything that we were used to doing and, and it's kind of just turned kindergarten kind of upside down because everything, you know, we're so used to everything being so hands-on and, and that's been a little bit more difficult. But the kids have been amazing. Like we have been able, from the whole like remote time, we really focused on building relationships with them and I think through doing that that once they came in having those relationships built I made it such a smoother like transition um, they have handled it so well it's been um, so much of a, of a team effort and the fact that we all kind of pull together from what we see and what we think we can do at home and how do we make sure the kids are at home are getting what we're giving the kids that are in here with us we meet on Mondays and we plan and we basically go through you know all of our programs so we use foundations we use the reading and writing fundamentals and so as we look and we're all kind of using the same like math units so when we look at it um, like I know we are doing shapes this week for math so we look at all right what we do be doing with shapes is we introduce them you know we would introduce each shape we would talk about what we, what we see in the environment um, share like a story about them how they're made what they look like um, we're building brace maps with them here so then we look at, all right, the same lesson that I would teach in class is what I'm filming for the kids to watch, but then as far as like the work the kids do, how can I adjust that? So then we look at, well, if they were here, I would be having them draw examples. So then when we're using the technology at home, you know, use your iPad, go hunt around your house for a picture of something that's shaped like a triangle and take a picture of it and share it with us. We're doing sorts in class, so we can give them whatever we can, however we can adjust an activity to do on Seesaw that's the same as we do here. With it being like reading and writing, they still get to see the lesson of us. Whatever I would model in front of my kids in class, that's what's on the video that they are watching. So it's essentially like I'm teaching the same lesson 
twice. <laughs> and then I'm doing it once for the video and then once when they're in here. So we really just look at if this were a normal year, <laughs> how would I teach it and now how can I, I do that both in class and at home so that, so that it's the same. And it's just a matter of us all putting our heads together and what materials can we send home with them? What will they have at home? What do we know for sure they have at home? And that's the other thing too is making sure they have that equity um, as far as materials too. Like, you know, what have we given them? What can we get to them in time for them to do this lesson so that everybody has the same opportunity to do the activities. This was our first week. This was our second time actually Zooming with the kids and having kids in the classroom. Um, and they love that. They love getting to see that this is what it looks like at home and that they are still at home and then part of the class. They, they have loved, I think, you know, it was so fun like watching them come in the first day and you know, recognizing each other because we have been Zooming with each other and they've just seen each other on the computer. So again, to see like there wasn't that typical first day like nervousness from them. You know, they, they already knew each other and it was like, oh, okay, yeah, I know you and, and talking to each other. They, I think it's, you know, they have just been so excited to get to see the kids in person um, and then to seeing them on the computer. Like I, I had, <laughs> You know, a couple of the kids came in this morning like, we're going to Zoom today, right? We're going to Zoom today. So they were so excited to get to see what it looks like from this side. I, I, we only have like a, a few kids that are 100% remote. So by doing this and keeping them with Zoom, it keeps them connected with the class. And like they can, they are still part of it. You know, they still get to see all of their friends and see what's going on. So, I mean, we were all nervous about starting this. Like, oh my gosh, you know, how are we going to do this with kindergarten as far as having kids at home on the computer and trying to, to manage the kids in the classroom, like how, how are we gonna do it? And they, they have done so well, you know, I think um, they were just so excited to get to see. And then once you get in there, you realize, okay, you know, this isn't so bad, which I feel like it's been a lot of things this year. There's been so many things where we've asked like, how, okay, <laughs> how on earth are we gonna do that? And somehow, you know, <laughs> We've all come together and, and found a way, and that's the thing. This whole team, like, they, everybody's like, all right, yeah, let's just, let's just rip that Band-Aid off <laughs> and, and do it. So, yeah. Great job, Parsley. Keep it tuned here each week as your school news will be bringing you more features on the amazing people and programs in our school system. That's all we have for today's show. Keep it tuned here each week for all the latest from New Hanover County Schools, and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Brandon Shope. Thanks so much for watching.